In this new segment of Advisor Revelations, the DPL team will discuss how to evaluate new solutions and address current challenges and the strategies that can help you grow your firm and AUM. Welcome to this segment of Advisor Revelation Podcast. We're going to dive a little deeper into some strategies that we're seeing advisors use each and every day with DPL. Today's topic, we're going to specifically be looking at guaranteed income and retirement income. Uh, This is Tim Rambowski. I'm the Vice President of Member Success here at DPL. And uh, joining me is one of our lead consults, Cameron McRae. Cam, thanks for uh, joining us today. Thanks, Tim. Happy to be here. Look forward to the conversation. Yeah, no, it should be an exciting one. But before we get started, just as a reminder, you can follow us easily if you go to our website, dplfp.com, and go to our About Us page to check out the team. And you can learn more about the team and and schedule a time with one of us to dive deeper into this topic as well as with membership. So with that, let's go ahead, Kim, let's kind of get the elephant out of the room here. When everybody thinks about annuities, everybody thinks about annuitizing, right? They think of, oh, if I buy an annuity you know, something happens to me, you know, that money could be gone instantly, you know, the insurance company is going to rip me off, right? So everybody thinks about this guaranteed income, and they always think about, you know, annuitizing. Walk us through that. Does anybody actually ever do that whole annuitization type of structure for income? Not particularly, Tim, I'd say it's, uh, it's more of a rarity for our firms to provide clients guaranteed income via annuitization. I think it's good just to understand the differences between guaranteed income via annuitization versus guaranteed income through a withdrawal rider. So again, like you said, one of the big misconceptions people have is if I'm going to, you know, turn on guaranteed income, I'm going to, you know, lose access to that cash value. It's an irrevocable decision, right? And that's true via annuitization. So things like SPIAs or single premium immediate annuities, you know, that's how they provide guaranteed income. But as carriers have evolved, they now have withdrawal benefit riders, which is the main way our firms provide guaranteed income to their client. And the benefit is that it's still guaranteed income, but along the way, the client still has a cash value and a death benefit until that cash value is depleted via withdrawals. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because I read a stat the other day that less than 2% of all annuities are actually annuitized. But we think about annuities, we're always thinking about guaranteed income. So it sounds like this rider is what most people use. So I can see how that works from a client's perspective. You know, they have the cash value, it's liquid, they can withdraw from. What about from the advisor's perspective? Are they still investing the money, still charging fees? How does that work? That's a great question, Tim. And yes, they are charging AUM fees on those cash values of those annuities. I think in the past, RA firms have shied away from annuities for multiple reasons. One being the commissions, another being would deem a new aside. So giving up AUM fee to turn on an income stream, right? Because that would be out of their AUM ban or no longer charging AUM fees on that. The good news is with the commission-free solutions that where we're utilizing a rider for guaranteed income, still have a cash value and the RA firm is simply including that as part of their AUM fee. Yeah, it makes sense. So it fits in kind of in the overall asset allocation, it sounds like. So what would you say, you know, I've seen a lot of news and publications as well about it's a low interest rate environment. Right. And, uh, you know, we hear sometimes that people shy away because they don't want to be locked in, to, you know, some type of income stream in a low rate environment right now. The Fed's talking about raising rates and whatnot. You know, what is that conversation like when you're when you're talking to an advisor that might have that hesitation? That's a great question. And obviously one that we get a lot where a firm might be hesitant to lock in an income stream in a low interest rate environment. But it starts with the education. Right. Particularly. There's plenty of white papers or academic research. Dr. Wade Fowles has done a lot on the topic. And the fact of the matter is that in a low interest rate environment, it's actually more valuable to have a commission-free annuity structure providing guaranteed income. As interest rates come down, the benefits of risk pulling become greater when you're comparing it to fixed income. So we always try to educate on, hey, we are utilizing this as a fixed income alternative. If we just think about it, if our fixed income is generating 2%, but an annuity can guarantee us 5 6% guaranteed for life, apples to oranges in the lower interest rate environment, that annuity is actually more valuable than when interest rates are higher. That makes sense. And what about you know somebody that might say, well, I'll wait a year or two. 
you know, to buy it and I'll wait for rates. I, sure, I hear you, Cam, you know, the guaranteed income makes sense, but I'd rather wait a year or two for rates to rise. Is there is there a cost of waiting, I guess, or, or why wouldn't somebody want to wait a couple of years and for rates to rise to, to lock into an income stream? Yeah, I, I think two things there, Tim. I think one, for the most part, a lot of our RA firms in our audience, you know, typically subscribe to markets are efficient. They're not market timing, you know, more passive investments. So it's thinking, you know, we're not market timing on the equity side. Why would we try to become market timers on the fixed income side of things as well? And then second, there is a large cost to waiting. It's it's actually more than you think if you just do the math and say we're locking in some guarantee of 3% uh, for you know, X and three years, you know, what will we have to find two years down the, or one year down the road from interest rate to make up that difference from just being on the sidelines for that one year? And there is a big cost to waiting as well. So we look at, you know, these types of structures, just guaranteed income solution. What types of clients are you seeing buy these? Because I think a lot of people think, oh, well, you know, if my client's going to run out of money, you know, guaranteed income is kind of the last resort. But just kind of in the front lines of your experience working with advisors, you know, what types of clients, is it that kind of spendthrift person that's going to run out of money? This is a last resort or what are you seeing? No, it can be. And I think that's how advisors and, and the public generally think about, oh, this client would benefit from an annuity because they might run out of money. But at the end of the day, who would benefit from an, an annuity is really anyone who would like to have efficient income generation in retirement, right? So when we're talking about guaranteed income, again, it's always a fixed income alternative. So, hey, a dollar going into this annuity can generate more retirement income than a dollar in our fixed income portfolio. So advisors sometimes ask, what's the right age? And I think the better question is, where is that client at in their timeline, right? So really any clients in transition, so transition into retirement thinking, you know, five, 10 years before retirement, five, 10 years after retirement, really where sequence of returns risk can can really be the most harmful to a portfolio. That's where advisors need to start thinking about guaranteed income. And again, any clients, you know, with underperforming fixed income assets. So to that point, you know, transition clients, it might be 60, 40, or even 70, 30 clients. We'd look to maybe take half of that fixed income portfolio to, to drive some efficiencies for that retirement income. That's great. And I think DPL provides some tools on the website, right, to kind of to play around with that. Could you talk us a little bit about the fixed income comparison tool on the website that uh, somebody could use to to kind of do the evaluation you're referring to? Yes, of course. So I think one thing we try to do here at DPL when working with our firms is help them operationalize the academic research. And so we do have a multitude of discovery tools to make that process easier for advisors. So regarding the fixed income comparison, it is a phenomenal tool that shows what I just discussed, right? Showing the efficiencies of an annuity compared to a traditional fixed income. So all you really do is, you know, put some inputs about a client, you know, age, when they're going to retire, their time horizon, and also lets you put in, you know, your CMAs on the fixed income returns you expect or that client's particular fixed incomes. And it's going to run Monte Carlo's and simulate, you know, how that fixed income compares to an annuity on our platform and optimizes for the best annuity for that client situation, just using data analytics. But at the end of the day, what it does show is what the academics have always and I said, guaranteed income is good if you think about it as a fixed income alternative, and it will essentially show the efficiency, I guess, the delta of how much more efficient that annuity can be for that client's portfolio so that we can see higher legacy values, we can see higher Monte Carlo short scores, et cetera. Yeah. And I think I was playing around that tool the other day, and um, I think it was about what about a 40% more efficient income solution. So when you do that evaluation, you say, okay, if I'm trying to provide income for my client and you know, I think it's really important to focus in on where, you know, how we're generating the income. Obviously we have, you know, market appreciation with equities, but then if we just isolate what fixed income is doing for us, which is very little right now, if we isolate fixed income and compare it to an annuity, what the tool, I think what it shows us is it's about 40% more efficient, meaning I can fund the same income with 40% fewer dollars which is massively efficient, right? 40% more efficient. Plus what we're seeing too, they came, you're talking about the legacy side. Uh, you know, we're seeing those assets, you know, being invested elsewhere. So it, it sounds like from what you're kind of explaining to me with that tool, 
it's not for just the person running out of money. It's also it can be for a higher net worth individual that's just trying to, you know, leave a larger legacy, right? No, exactly right. So it's pretty common sense after you kind of see the tool and think about just what fixed income portfolios are doing and client portfolios. They're not really giving them much, right? A lot of firms are just utilizing them for balance in the portfolio. So, you know, seeing that you can efficiently fund retirement income to the tune of 40% more efficiently, well, that's obviously utilizing less dollars. A dollar going into the annuity is generating more income than a dollar sitting in fixed income, a traditional fixed income portfolio. So we have more dollars that we can allocate to growth assets if we know a client's income is taken care of, right? That's kind of the idea you're getting to there. And if we're able to allocate more to growth assets while we're efficiently funding retirement income, well, then of course, that leaves more assets available to grow and leave a larger legacy. And to tie it all in and how this, you know, we talk a lot about improving client outcomes, right? Well, that's improving client outcome is a larger legacy if you're efficiently funding retirement, as well as a larger legacy simply means, you know, more AUM generating more revenue for that RA firm. So back to kind of what we're trying to do here at DPL is provide better client outcomes and help firms grow AUM. It's a great vehicle and tool to kind of see that in action. So if I'm an advisor and I hear what you're saying, I've read Wade Fowl, I've heard, you know, listen to Michael Finca, David Blanchett, I got all these academics tell me I need to do this, but I've never done it before. I guess kind of get, walk me through the DPL process kind of for that advisor that maybe says, Hey, like, I understand I should pay attention to this, but I don't do insurance. So help me out here. Walk walk me through kind of the process for somebody that's in that position. You know, we've got it pretty streamlined. We've done it with over 1,500 RA firms across the country at this point. And, um, you know, the first step is really, you know, getting them to understand that annuities have changed, right? So typically when they're fine DPL, we're past that. So we'll skip, you know, the academic research, but they have the academic research. They know, hey, I need to look at this. So we'll start there. Well, the first thing is educating them on who would benefit, right? Which we've touched on a little bit. So it's always, hey, those clients that are in transition, those clients who have underperforming fixed income assets and who want to officially fund retirement income. Okay, great. It might be clients where the Monte Carlo scores not terrible, but not exactly where we want it to be, that might be a good place to start. So just bring in a couple client case studies, if you will, trial runs of clients. And again, it could be a small sport of who could benefit. But uh, after we have a couple client cases, what we'll want to do is we'll want to use the DPL discovery tools, right? So we'll, we'll go right to the fixed income calculator. We'll use an example. Maybe this client is a 60-40 client that's 65 and they plan on retiring in three years at 68. Um, So we can put these inputs into the fixed income comparison tool. Um, We can take either, you know, a dollar amount that we want to fund with. So in, in that example, we would take as a starting point, half of that client's fixed income portfolio and let the calculator run and educate the advisor there, see how much more efficient it is. We can also do the reverse, right? If an advisor is going through a plan and they know they're going to need $50,000 of additional guaranteed income after social security or maybe maybe other guaranteed income sources, we can also use the tool to find the right product there. But we just want to advise or understands the concepts and utilizing the DPL tools, we can get the best solution utilizing data and analytics. From there, what we'll do is once we have, you know, the discovery tools kind of showing us what the best product is for the variables we put in. Well, then we can also take it next step, right? We want to get that into the financial plan because, you know, our tools aren't the end all be all. We want to make sure the advisor is able to share, you know, utilize their dashboard, you know, whether it's an e-money, a money got pro right capital and how they speak with clients to be able to help them build that annuity into their plan, right? So that they can have the conversation with the client, you know, hello, Mr. And Mrs. Client, you know, this is your current plan. We you know we've recently found out about commission-free annuities. They now fit our business model. They're much more consumer value in them today. Here's what your plan looks like with the annuity, where we're reallocating, repositioning some of your fixed income portfolio to achieve higher Monte Carlo scores or to achieve higher legacy portfolio values. Do you find that it's kind of like an aha moment when an advisor actually puts it into the planning software? Because it seems like a lot of this can kind of just be in theory. It's a good idea, right? It's, I don't think anybody's really done a great job historically actually showing you practically how you can do it and the practical you know, implications of doing this. So do you find that 
advisors kind of have an aha moment when they model this into a financial plan and look at a Monte Carlo score? That's exactly what happens. And that's the point that our consultants here at DPL try to get advisors to, right? You know, let me show you. Let me show you how this is going to impact and positively impact a client portfolio utilizing your financial planning software. And the aha moment, not only that, you know, they understand why at this point after, you know, going through the process, but then also it opens their eyes to, hey, I was thinking about this just for the client who was going to run out of money, not, you know, maybe my higher net worth clients. But at the end of the day, what are those higher net worth clients? You know, what are their goals? Probably leaving a larger legacy. So being able to show that and have that aha moment and then have them connect the dots. So talk to us a little bit about the client experience. So right, advisor understands that they get the solution. You help them do diligence on them. But I know a lot of people say, oh, annuities are really complicated. You know, my client's not going to understand this, right? That's something I've heard before. So just talk to us a little bit about what's that interaction between the advisor and the client that kind of go through this solution? What does that look like? And what type of feedback have you heard from clients when they're being presented this? Yeah, Tim. So we've seen it a lot, right? Advisors who are traditionally not used to, you know, talking to clients about annuities or maybe just talking negatively about, you know, commission based high cost annuities that they might think they'll struggle in a client conversation. When I think actually the opposite is true, because at the end of the day, the annuity is not a very complicated vehicle to explain it, particularly, you know, the commission free ones on our platform that are very transparent and simple to understand. It's much easier to explain an annuity to a client than, you know, the inner workings of a mutual fund, for example. So arming the advisor with the knowledge, which after they've gone through the process they have and they'll be comfortable with, I think they also find that, you know, utilizing their, you know, standard financial planning tools, it's very easy for them to communicate you know, this is why we want to, you know, take a look at this, you know, alternative and how it's going to improve the outcome. And at the end of the day, I think the majority of the feedback is, you know, that was much easier than expected. And, oh, these clients always really wanted this, right? Clients like that. They have, you know, the psychological benefits. It might not be how it affects the financial plan, but the psychological benefits of having a guaranteed income stream and, you know, principal protection. Clients want that and they like that. And I think, advisors who, you know, go through the process with DPL begin to understand that now they can provide these types of solutions to clients. It's, it's something clients, you know, kind of wanted. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because, you know, a lot of the things that I read in the news and different, you know, stats and surveys, and this is looking at all different types of clients, you know, big, small, medium, large, the whole nine yards. It sounds like the number one challenge for clients is when they move into retirement, you know, they're used to having that base salary, right? They're used to having income come in the door and then they kind of their investments were kind of doing the thing, right? Just letting the investments go. So, you know, accumulation seems like, you know, advisors are very comfortable talking to clients and, and clients are very comfortable with the accumulation phase. It seems like the number one concern for investors is once they get to the deaccumulation phase, it's like, now I need to live off my portfolio. And I saw a stat the other day that was 65% of clients were looking for reliable retirement income. And in the past, you know, you could just clip, you know, coupons from bonds and that would be your reliable income. And based on our conversation so far, it sounds like just clipping coupons isn't doing it anymore. Taking it from equities could be risky, taking on more risk. So it sounds like that 65% of people that are raising their hand saying, I want reliable income. It sounds like a commission-free annuity might be a good solution for those people then, right? No, exactly right. To your point of, you know, the psychology of, of going from working to retirement, right? You know, having, you know, a salary, having an income, building a nest egg, right? To now, oh, something's it's flipped. Now I have to worry about this nest egg. I, I have to worry about this lasting my entire life. Those are emotional triggers, right? And it makes sense why clients would want those types of things, reliable income and commission-free annuities are honestly one of the only places that are available where a firm and a client can feel that comfort of reliable income to your point where we no longer have interest rates of, you know, six, 7% where we can clip coupons and use fixed income for income, right? Well, we need to look elsewhere and the commission-free annuities are a great place to look. And then talk to me a little bit about how advisors are using this from with regards like an asset gathering tool, right? Are you seeing advisors, you know, because obviously they could just, you know, sell some bonds and go buy this annuity. That's one part. 
But are you also seeing them use these types of solutions to maybe attract a new client or to attract new assets? Talk to me a little bit about how, you know, an advisor could use this maybe as a differentiator and also, you know, a way to kind of bring more assets on. No, that's a great question. And, and that's what a lot of our member firms do. And, and our marketing team does provide some very simple language to kind of let a client know that, hey, my RA firm, I now have access to commission-free annuities. So it's basically a call to action for clients who might have assets on the sideline, assets in current annuities that might be commission driven and more on the expensive side as a way to, you know, let the advisor take a look at those annuities, right? Because that's the best place to start. You know, clients with existing annuities that might just be expensive and not provide any, you know, great type of guaranteed income like we can see today on the commission free side. Those are now going to be, you know, able to bring brought in house and brought under the RA's management. That's a great place to start. And then you know, clients with cash on the sidelines and not knowing what to do with it, it's another, you know, great spot to, you know, bring in more assets. So it's those existing annuities that are out there working with DPL. It's a great way to gather those, you know, put those assets to better work in a commission free solution while also bringing them under management. And again, those clients might be wanting annuities. They might be going out and doing their own research and speaking with agents and you know learning about annuities. So it's a great way to provide them a better value in the commission-free nature of annuity and just kind of get them in something that they're comfortable with and want. So I see it as both ways, bringing assets in, but also not letting them leave either, Tim. That's interesting, kind of an asset retention tool because definitely clients go to these steak dinners where they hear about this great annuity that's sponsored by a commission agent, right? So definitely just having that in your quiver sounds like it's a good idea. And kind of just last thing, Kim, before we let you go, just talk to us a little bit about the advisors that you work with, where they've implemented these solutions. Obviously, it might have been the first annuity they've ever done in their career, right? So they've implemented it. They've done it a few times. They're now meeting with clients, kind of post-mortem going through this. What kind of feedback are they giving you? Is it positive? Like, man, I'm really glad that you know we made this change. What are they kind of telling you kind of post-mortem after they've done this a few times? I think one, I touched on a little bit. I think the number one, because we're always asking for feedback from advisors on how client meetings went, how, you know, how it went. And of course, the first couple of times the advisors not used to talking about the annuities. I don't know if scary is the right word. It might not be scary, but they might be less comfort there. I think they find that it was a much easier conversation to have than they thought going into it. They find that it is what the clients, you know, wanted when they hear about it. And it's something that the client, you know, appreciates that the advisor could provide them today. And then after the fact, you know, even, you know, we'll go even, you know, a year out once we've started a guaranteed income stream for a client, the advisor will come back and say, Hey, we did our annual review with, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Smith. They love XYZ, you know, commission free annuity they're in. The meeting went great. We really appreciate, you know, the education and, and helping us find, giving us the tools to be able to to do that for our clients and put them in a better situation. You know, this has been super helpful, Kim. Thanks for joining us today. Cause this is definitely a topic that we hear about all the time, which is how do I get reliable retirement income? I know a lot of times this today it's just used with portfolio returns. And, you know, for some clients, it's not good enough. So this concept of, you know, guaranteed income that fits into an advisory model, you know, it sounds like it makes a lot of sense. So yeah, and thanks to all of our listeners that are out there today. As the next step from here, I would really encourage you to hop out to the website, go to the team page. You can, you know, click to talk to Cam, his calendar's up there, as well as any other member of our team. And also there's webinars, there's white papers. If you go to the resources tab on the website, there's tons of supporting documents. So if you're if you're still kind of in the discovery phase and you want to learn the academic research, I really encourage you to go to that page and then reach out to the team once you're comfortable. And as well as check out that fixed income comparison tool that Cam was talking about today. That's a place where you can come in and play around with your own CMAs and check it out. So yeah, thanks everyone for listening today and hearing about this important topic. And Cam, thanks for joining us today. Very insightful. Thanks, Tim. Appreciate it. for listening. To hear more advisor revelations, go to dplfp.com and subscribe on your favorite podcast streaming app.